Hi everyone, this is VJ Fader. Uh, today I'm gonna show you an awesome demo on how to do your own audiovisual performance using Ableton Live and AV Mixer Pro. And uh, both softwares are connected through MIDI uh, and uh, that way you can trigger and launch clips in Ableton and have it change videos in AV Mixer. Why are we doing this? It's because uh, although you can play video directly from Ableton, but it's only possible through the timeline. That means it's really designed for scoring music and uh, you know doing soundtracks. So it's not really designed for live performance. So let's get to it. Uh, quickly, I'm gonna explain the setup here. Uh, I'm demoing this on my uh, MacBook. Pro 13 inch, so the desktop space is a bit limited. Also, the playback speed is a bit slower because I'm also doing screen recording. On the upper right hand corner, you'll see the output window of AV Mixer Pro where you can uh, full screen this output window to your external uh, desktop for projector or thermal screens. What I've done here is uh, I connected my Ableton Live project to AV Mixer Pro uh, and uh, what this can do is it, I can launch series of scenes and control videos in AV Mixer uh, without touching AV Mixer at all. So actually all the controls are being executed in Ableton Live. I'm going to launch through a series of scenes and show you what's going on. So I'm actually uh, using one of the uh, DJ demo uh, projects from Ableton and then I added my own MIDI channels and these MIDI channels are sending signals to AV Mixer Pro. This way the two software can talk to each other during a performance. So what I did is I previously loaded uh, pre-arranged uh, video clips into these folders and these clips are available here. Uh, so the, using the MIDI signals, I'm triggering these clips uh, from Ableton. Plus, I think you notice that uh, what I can also do is change the speed of these videos to match the tempo of the tracks by also again sending the correct MIDI signal, uh, basically control messages to change the speed of these clips. And for this to work, make sure you go to the preferences of your Ableton Live and navigate to MIDI and make sure that the MIDI port output is set to on. So uh, what I would do is uh, I'm going to start over uh, and walk you through some of the steps on how to create these MIDI tracks uh, and then have it communicate with AV Mixer and uh, go create and insert new MIDI track. I'm going to call this channel A loops, right? So this MIDI track is going to control channel A. And again, all these naming is purely for your own reference. I mean, the Ableton doesn't care what you name it. But then uh, once you have a lot of MIDI clips floating around, it gets really confusing. So it's a good idea to start naming as you go. So I'm going to double click and create an empty 
MIDI track, uh, MIDI clip here. And the right click, I'm gonna rename this to uh, Visual Loop 1. So now it's empty, it doesn't do anything. What I would do is I'm just gonna double click uh, and uh, insert a MIDI note. And this MIDI note, it can be sent out to any softwares that you have running on your Mac or PC. Once I have this MIDI track created and then created a MIDI clip and then I double click, uh, I scrolled it on all the way to the top of this um, these notes here and then so I created the first one on F sharp 8. In order for this MIDI track to send signals to AV Mixer, you go to MIDI 2 and on this pull down menu you can see to AV Mixer if you have AV Mixer launched and running. So now if I solo this and then if I hit play, so this is gonna keep sending this MIDI note over and over again. So now we go back to AV Mixer and then we launch the MIDI settings window. And you can see this is our MIDI settings window. And uh, in AV Mixer, uh, it auto detects incoming MIDI signals. So when you see this incoming MIDI number, it says 126. So that's the number that we just created in Ableton. And uh, I'm gonna start over, so I'm gonna use my preset number three, uh, which everything is set to 127. So I'm gonna take this 126 and assign it to my channel A, uh, loop one. So if I just click, on this yellow box, uh, it says 126. So now I'm gonna commit and once you click, it's assigned. And as you go, you can keep hitting the save button to save uh, into preset number three. And you can use any one of these three presets. Now I'm gonna go back to Ableton uh, and uh, assign my second clip, right? So I can make a copy of this first one and uh, rename this a uh, loop number two. Uh, for loop number two, I'm gonna send a different MIDI note. So I'm gonna just drag this MIDI note down one slot, F8, and uh, go back to AV Mixer. Uh, if you look at the MIDI settings and now it's incoming signal is 125. And uh, yeah, you can manually change these numbers by using these little arrows or you just click and they'll automatically assign. Now if I go back to Ableton and if I trigger these two MIDI clips that I just created, you can see that the both will be able to trigger uh, first and the second video of channel A. It's pretty cool. So that's basically it. That's the uh, concept on how to trigger clips from Ableton Live to AV Mixer. So what if we want to do the same thing for channel B? Uh, we can just replicate by um, adding another MIDI track, insert MIDI track, and then just double click, pick one of the notes. And again, you want to pick a note that's different than when you were sending already from your other channels, right? Here I'm sending this D sharp eight. Now if I solo this track and play this clip uh, and make sure again that MIDI two is set to AV Mixer Pro. If I go to channel B and I wanna use incoming MIDI number 123 for my first loop, I'm just gonna copy this and uh, move this note down one and play this note. If I play this, it's gonna keep sending this MIDI number and then you can see this number changed and I would switch this second loop to 122. And now what's gonna happen is if I play this group together, what it's gonna do is it's gonna play the sound sample and the video at the same time. Pretty cool. As you notice, it's triggering the clips 
every time because my MIDI is set to loop. Uh, what you can do is once you have everything assigned, you can unloop it. So what it will do is it will only trigger and play that loop because in, in AV Mixer, every video is looping continuously, right? It do, you don't have to necessarily call it and let it play every time when this loop is looping inside Ableton Live. Uh, however, you can choose to do that if you want to trigger a certain video over and over again uh, when the loop is playing. Plus, you can change the time interval of how often this loop triggers all within live itself. Now, what if I want to control and change the speed uh, of my video based on, you know, every video might have a different speed that it plays and in AV Mixer, you can control the speed uh, through MIDI, through external MIDI controller. And that's very handy because uh, not every loop, uh, not every video plays on the same tempo. Uh, and uh, what you can do is you can pre-assign a tempo or speed for the video to match the sound sample of your live set. So I'm gonna create a new MIDI track again and call this, uh, for example, channel A speed and uh, what I would do is I'll double click and then if you toggle this E little button envelope in here what I would do is I'll go and pick one of these controller channels for example pick 15 and now this will send control messages out from Ableton to any other software in this uh, timeline uh, of this clip, I'll just double click to create a control message value. And this is something I noticed that uh, maybe I'm wrong, uh, maybe someone has a solution for this. Uh, it will not send any control messages if the value doesn't change. So I, I have to make the value change slightly. So what I would do is I'll just make first one zero, make the second uh, keyframe as one, uh, I'll just shorten this time frame really short. Now I can just drag this uh, keyframe up and down. And as it's going, I'm gonna again uh, solo this um, new MIDI track that I made. Uh, I'm gonna send the MIDI to AV Mixer Pro. Uh, now if I play this control message track, uh, it's gonna continuously send uh, CC15 out to AV Mixer. And let's see if that's working. So I go back to the MIDI settings window. Uh, now you can see incoming MIDI number 15. So now I can assign this to anything I want. For example, I'm gonna click on playback speed on channel A. Great, now that's assigned. Once it's assigned, uh, you don't, again, uh, as I mentioned earlier, you don't have to make it loop all the time. So you can take out the loop, so it will only uh, send and assign a uh, speed to that clip when I hit play. So basically the point here is to have the video really matching correctly to your sample, uh, the speed is very important. So that means you really need to have the right speed that's playing for your video that matches the tempo of your audio track. So you can just replicate this MIDI clip uh, and then change the uh, value of this control message and adjust this and uh, beat match it to your uh, video and uh, make sure these two video plays correctly. So now I have video number one is playing at 124% and then video number two is playing at 91. So you can fine tune this setting uh, to make it match correctly. Uh, and uh, now I grouped all three of these into a single group. Now if I just uh, launch this uh, clip in this one group, then it will just play everything uh, accordingly. What about the crossfader? Uh, it's really the same concept. Create a new MIDI track and uh, rename this to crossfader. And uh, yeah, I just double click and then create a new MIDI clip. 
again, you don't need any of the MIDI notes. Uh, you just go to the envelope uh, section of your MIDI clip and then pick uh, one of these controller channels. So I'm going to say pick number 20. I'll double click uh, on the timeline to create a, a keyframe. Uh, again, I double click again uh, so that, uh, say for example, I start out uh, at message number zero and then I'm going to ramp it up all the way to 127. And then this time uh, determines how fast or how slow your crossfade happens. So this way you can crossfade between uh, the channel A and B and then between a B cross mix to channel C, right? So if I uh, solo again, I will solo this. So A B mixer is only receiving this single uh, MIDI message at one time. And uh, again, uh, MIDI two. I'm gonna set this to A B mixer Pro. Uh, and if I go back to A B mixer Pro's MIDI settings, uh, you can see that the uh, now incoming MIDI message 20, channel 20, and I'll assign that to mixer one fader. So I click mixer one fader, and now you can see that this is doing cross fading uh, over and over again uh, because my MIDI clip is set to loop. So yeah, you can you know uh, make it loop or make it just cross fade once. So that concludes uh, our little demo of controlling uh, AV Mixer directly from Ableton Live. Uh, and uh, you get the basic concepts here. Uh, and what you can do is you can continue on and assign uh, pretty much everything in the UI of AV Mixer. You can assign a MIDI to control it. For example, the effects, uh, the cross faders, uh, and uh, speed and playback and clips and there's all three channels here and for this demo I'm uh, using some of the content that's available on AV loops uh, for example on channel A I have uh, visuals created by one of our artists Catmac uh, and it's available on avloops.com